The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explain development of plot, subplot, conflict, character, and the role of the narrator where relevant. Today, I want you to close your eyes and imagine something. I want you to imagine that the only stories you ever heard were about people who had no problems. Imagine that in love songs, no one ever sang about having their heart broken and finding love again. Imagine that in movies about cops, there were never any bad guys, and the cops just sat around drinking coffee all day. And imagine that in stories about the past, there were no wars. Instead, the two groups would meet each other and say, ish, this is stupid. Of course you can have my land, my freedom. And please, while you're here, take my children. I don't want to cause you any trouble. Not only would we find these stories ridiculous, but we would also find them very boring and unrealistic because they would say nothing about our real lives. Hi. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about conflict in short stories. The one thing we can say about the world that we live in is that it is full of conflict. And this conflict is one of the things we struggle with every day. And because stories are written by real people living in the world, they have to deal with the real issues and conflicts. Let's start off with a definition of conflict. Conflict is the disagreement, difference, or confrontation between two characters, the character and his or her context, or even within one character. Let's add these new terms to our collection on the mind map before we go on to discuss them in detail. Conflict, which could mean Disagreement or confrontation. Just like the other terms we've learned about so far. Background, setting, plot, timeline, character, conflict is something that you will find in all forms of literature and any short story that you may be studying in class. Let's look at each of these in a bit more detail. Conflict between two characters is quite straightforward. The disagreement or differences could be between a cop and a murderer in a detective story, a man and a woman in a love story, or between two lawyers in a courtroom drama. In each of these situations, we would have the protagonist and the antagonist. Let's recap these two terms. The protagonist is the main character, and the antagonist is the character who is in conflict with the main character. In the second type of conflict, we have the character in conflict with his or her circumstances. We would see this conflict in a story about a person struggling with an illness, or perhaps a political situation. You could even see this type of conflict in a story about nature or a natural disaster. The third type of conflict is described as internal because it happens inside the mind and the emotions of the character. In other words, the character is torn between wanting two things or between two feelings. Perhaps a story could be about a boy loving his parents but also needing to leave them to make life in the city. This would create internal conflict as he battled to choose. But a really great story will have elements of conflict on all of these levels. So, with that in mind, let's look at conflict as an element of literature in the suit, as well as with all the other lessons in this series. We are using the suit as an example of a short story, but you should be able to find conflict in all its different forms in other works of literature. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to define conflict, identify conflict in a short story, be able to tell the difference between the different types of character conflict, Remember that we said the first type of conflict that occurs is conflict between characters. Well, this definitely happens in the suit, as there is plenty of conflict between Philemon and Matilda. Usually, the introduction of the story lets the reader know what the conflict is. In this case, we see that conflict is that Philemon loves his wife, but she's having an affair. The rise in action of the plot shows the struggle between these characters becoming more and more intense, and the conflict develops further when Philemon punishes Matilda by making her lover suit the center of their lives. The interesting thing about the conflict in this story is that it is so controlled and unspoken. Philemon doesn't scream or shout. He doesn't hit Matilda or chase her out of their home. Instead, his reaction is very calm yet so very cruel. Remember this when you're looking for conflict in a short story that you're reading. The conflict is not always obvious. It can take the form of an uncomfortable atmosphere or tension between the characters. Then, the conflict between the couple is made even more intense by the game that Philemon forces Matilda to play. 
you almost wish that they could have a normal fight where they shout at each other instead of the strange silence about what has really happened and Philemon's cruel mind games. The final development of the conflict and crisis happens between Philemon and Matilda on the night of the party. Once again, the only people who are aware of just how bad the conflict is are the couple. All the guests just think that it's a silly joke. Of course the conflict cannot go on forever. Something needs to happen to resolve or end the conflict. Can you recall what happens to the end of the conflict in the suit? The story doesn't end happily ever after with the couple kissing and making up, as it happens in some other stories. Instead, the conflict is resolved or ended by Matilda's decision to kill herself and put an end to the struggle between them. At the start of this lesson, we said that there are three types of conflict. Conflict occurs between characters, within characters, and lastly, between characters and their circumstances. So far, we have looked at the first type of conflict between characters. Now let's think about conflict that occurs within characters. When you are studying literature, you always need to be able to back up the claim you're making with evidence from the text. So let's look for references in the suit that indicate struggles that go on within the character's own minds. Remember, when you're looking for examples in the text you're studying, that these examples of conflict are not as obvious as the conflict between the two characters. However, in this story and in most other good stories, this conflict happens below the surface. Here is an example of some evidence we could use. It was not quite like the explosion of a devastating bomb. It was more like the critical breakdown in an infinitely delicate mechanism. From outside, the machine seemed to have gone dead, but deep down in its innermost recesses, menacing electrical flashes were leaping from coil to coil, and hot, viscous molten metal was creeping upon the fuel tanks. This is not a description of an action, but rather a way of describing the internal conflict that Philemon experiences. His love for his wife is broken down by her betrayal. Here we see the beginning of his plan to punish her. Let's look at the text in detail. From outside, the machine seemed to have gone dead. But deep down in its innermost recesses, menacing electrical flashes were leaping from coil to coil. And hot, viscous molten metal was creeping upon the fuel tanks. We can read this as a metaphor. From the outside of their relationship, everything seems normal. But inside their home and inside the relationship, things are definitely broken and are about to explode. But we have to ask ourselves, why does Philemon hide this conflict with his wife? Why isn't it out in the open? We have seen when we were looking at character that he is a very proud man. He dresses and washes carefully and prepares for everything the next day with great attention. Perhaps what we see here is another kind of conflict for him that he wants to appear to be perfect in the eyes of society and the community. Although Philemon has been betrayed by his wife, and as far as we know, he hasn't done anything wrong. He doesn't want the whole town to know that she has made him a fool by cheating on him. For Matilda, worrying about what the society and community will think of her is definitely a source of conflict. We don't read about her struggle with feelings of guilt. We have nothing in the text that tells us that she feels bad about betraying her husband's trust. There is no evidence in the story that tells us that she misses her lover. Instead, the struggle for Matilda is the social humiliation of having to serve the suit the special dinner she's prepared, having to take the suit for a walk in town, having all her friends witness her humiliation. When she had to serve the suit supper in her own home, in front of only Philemon, she may not have enjoyed it, but she did it. It is when she has to make a fool of herself in front of all her friends and neighbors that she's trying so hard to impress that the conflict becomes too much for her. Remember, we said earlier that conflict cannot go on forever in a story and that it is often resolved at the climax of the story. Well, when Matilda kills herself there is a resolution to the two conflicts in the story. On the one hand, it resolves a conflict between Philemon and Matilda. On the other hand, it also resolves Matilda's internal conflict between her circumstances and the feelings of humiliation that she cannot bear any longer. However, while Matilda's death resolves some conflicts, it creates a whole new conflict for Philemon. Philemon still loves Matilda, and he now sees what his punishment has done to her. 
His internal conflict is now made up of feelings of love, grief, and guilt. Okay, now, we found two forms of conflict in the story, The Suit. We've seen conflict between characters, conflict within characters, and now we're going to look at conflict between characters and their circumstances. Before you continue to watch this lesson, you may want to discuss what conflict you think there is between the characters and their circumstances in the short story, The Suit. The social context and setting of a story can be another important source of conflict in a story. Let's think back to the setting that we have for The Suit. As much as we look back on the Safiatan era with nostalgia today, it was not always easy or an easy place or a time to live in. Ken Tamba was also concerned with what it was like to be a new African in South Africa. New Africans were people who had university degrees, but due to past laws and other racist regulations, were not able to realize their potential in South Africa. Ken Temba was particularly interested in how these educated black South Africans were attracted to white society and yet were also repelled by it. In other words, how they may have wanted to live in the so-called white suburbs, but at the same time wanted to be part of the black community. He felt that through his internal struggle, these individuals lost something of their own black tribal culture. Most of the short stories that Ken Temba wrote use a romantic or thriller style and show how difficult it was for black people to live in a country dominated by apartheid. Let's look at the references to this aspect of conflict in the suit. First of all, we are told that the living conditions were overcrowded. He dashed for the lavatory, nearly slipping in a pool of muddy water, but he reached the door. Oh, blast, someone had made it before him. Well, that is the toll of staying in a yard where 20, 30 other people have to share the same lane too. And there was the political situation under apartheid, which made day-to-day -day life difficult for black people in Sophia Town. From the text, we can see that the character Philemon is an intelligent and an intellectual man. He has always got a book in his hand and is interested in reading a wide range of subjects, including psychology. The setting of the story also adds another level to the story. When a story is set on a bright sunny day, we are prepared for a light-hearted story. When the action is set in a gloomy, dark setting, we anticipate a plot that is full of conflict. In the suit, we see hints of conflict that is about to occur in the following lines. He wondered, had a slant, why the rain in Sophia Town always came in the morning when workers had to creep out of their burrows and then at how blistering heat waves came during the day when messengers had to run errands all over, and then at how the rain came back when workers knocked off and had to scurry home. Here we see clues as to Philemon's frustration at the hardships of his community's life, even though he has a sense of humor about it. More clues are given in this paragraph. Then he washed himself carefully across the eyes under, in and out the armpits, down the torso, and in between the legs. This ritual was thorough, though no white men are complaining of the smell of wogs knows anything about it. Here we see a reference to the indignity of being criticized and commented on by racist white employers. Philemon reading the newspaper also gives us insight into the news of the day and Philemon's views on it. Of course, News included views on the bosses, scurrilous. The government, rude. Ghana and Russia, idolatrous. America and the West, sympathetically ridiculing. And boxing, bloodthirsty. These lines show us that Philemon and his friends were critical of the situation in South Africa, the government and current events. The conflict in a well-written story will cause the characters to develop. They will change with the crisis and will be different after the resolution. The tragedy in the suit is that Matilda will never have the chance of developing or changing any further and Philemon won't have the chance to resolve his conflict with the woman he loves. Let's have another look at the outcomes of this lesson. You should now be able to define conflict, identify conflict in a short story, be able to tell the difference between the different type of characters conflict, to see if you have achieved these outcomes, it is time for today's task. In this lesson, we learned that there are three types of conflict in literature. Conflict can refer to the disagreement, differences or confrontation between two characters, the character and his or her circumstances, or within a single character. 
Your task is to give an example of each of these types of conflict as portrayed in the story, The Suit. Remember that while we are all looking at the suit as an example, you should be able to analyze conflict from any short story that you may read. That's it from me. Goodbye.